Good morning and welcome to Herb Oracle Podcast, botanical divination with herbs, essences, flowers, and trees with your host, Herbal Marie. Let's start the day off pulling some oracle cards and getting a few messages. We can shoot the shiitake in a spiritual way-ish. And if you follow me on Instagram, I'll post a pic of the cards at Herb Oracle. Thanks so much for joining me. Here we go. So good morning. The problem with taking a few days off from podcasting is like literally within a couple days, I can become like a new person. (laughs) So two days seems like too long. Um, like what the heck, how do I even recap the past couple days? But one thing's for sure, my energy is way much lower than it was at the end of last week. What was going on with the energy last week? I was getting super hyper, super, super, um, yeah, intense. And, um, now things still are intense, but maybe I'm just, maybe they're just wearing on me. (laughs) So anyways, Yo, happy Monday. Um, We're going to do another law of the universe today. And um, I can try to attempt to recap all the bullshit in my life if you've been following that. And um, yeah, I would say like the theme though for me this weekend was... um, Oh, everything was like in my face emotionally within me. Like it was intense. Like... If there were triggers to be trigged, they were trugged. What? Yeah, like I got totally triggered every time I turned around this weekend. And so it was my serious personal challenge to um, maintain peace within me and just like deal with things that were going on. And um, yeah, in my living situation, the theme there is like, big double standard right now and um so anyways let's before I get into all that let me just say that last time that we did a law of the universe it was the law of common ground which was problem solving it was a problem solving approach and an area where two or more can gather to blend differences clear the space clean past energies and imprint your own energy Um, We talked about caging it with a golden net and sending love. All right, so that was the previous episode, which I should probably go back and listen to. (laughs) Actually, I should probably take like a day to listen to every single one of the episodes. Um, Even just going back and reading the titles, it's like, oh my gosh, yeah, like clean up your energy, bitch. Okay, like like I can read past back the titles and be reminded like okay remember do this remember do that remember there's such good memories of course we don't have time to do that like if you're just coming to this podcast now good luck catching up (laughs) it's like (laughs) this is a 37th podcast so yeah like that would be like almost 37 hours of listening yeah it's a lot so yeah um but today we are going to move on to number 13, the law of consciousness. And um, yeah, I think that uh, before we do that though, I'm gonna grab a stick of incense of Nag Champa and light it because I really do need to remember um, what the law of common ground was saying that like I need to clean, clean my space and this house needs to be cleansed. So let me uh, get some smoke up in here. All right, the smoke is rolling in the house now. <laughs> like when you need to light like 14 packs of of Nog Champa at the same time and just have the whole, like you can't even see. It's like the last post um, that I put on my Instagram page at Herb Oracle. I, it was so faded out white. It was like, <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Um, but like you couldn't even see the cards for the first um, picture. You had to swipe over to get some color, to get some clarity, to get some 
Yeah, to be that's what that's what I need to do. I need to swipe over my vision right now because yeah, my energy is feeling a little bit skittish, a little bit off and um <clears throat> I do not like it. But that's good when we know that we don't like something, um then we kind of can help ourselves get to a place of liking it. But um, the thing that I've been getting stuck on, um, so when I am feeling judge, judgmental, it's like, what am I projecting out and why am I feeling this and why is this really bugging me? So um, yeah, let's talk about that double standard real quick. So as you probably know, if you've been listening in, I am cohabitating with my future ex-husband. And yeah, there is this huge in my face double standard. Um, like for example, so Thursday, last let's go back a few days. Thursday I told you I was going to ladies' night and I did. But you know, before I left it was like, What time are you gonna be back? And you know, when I got back, he's freaking like on the porch, like like there, like when I get back, you know? And it was like, What the hell? Like even like the the leash felt a little short and there shouldn't even be a leash at this point right because he here's the double standard part totally is not ha having a leash on as he shouldn't um and like all day friday he's gone the complete day from sun up to d midnight right no phone calls no checking in with the kids nothing totally gone um saturday night he goes to an overnight party right so like the double standard is making my teeth grind a little bit. Not that I care, but like something inside me obviously does care because it's ticking me off. And here's the worst part for me. It's, it's triggering this part of me that's like, should I do the same thing? Like, I don't even know if I like have the energy to like act like him or do that right? Like it's not really in my nature to go out and um, get so drunk or whatever that I sleep in my vehicle. Like that's probably not me, right? Like <laughs> I want to come home and sleep in, in the bed. Um, but um, yeah, so there's this huge double standard that's like, I feel like I could like totally erupt and just tear his mug off. You know what I mean? Because it's really annoying. So it's I, my living situation right now. Like it's it's driving me a little bit. Like ugh, and uh, I made I made na I I made my bear claw whenever I did that. Ugh, yeah, it's starting to make me feel like a bear because I don't really want to go out looking for trouble just to make myself feel better. <laughs> but it's these type of situations that like prompt us to do that and it's like no like if that's not who you are don't do that right but like there is this like part of me that's like well that's not fair if he gets to do that I want to get to do that but anyways my whole point is he better back the f off and not ask me any questions about anything because I don't I shouldn't have to ever answer to him after this weekend all right so <laughs> The law of consciousness, uh -huh. that's what we're doing today. It's really short. It's the 13th law. And um, so yeah, pray, keep me on your prayer list, you guys, <clears throat> for my personal life. <laughs> keep me on the prayer list. <clears throat> yeah, keep me on there because I'm like ready to break things. But I'm okay. But I'm fine. But it's just so distracting. And I was telling my patrons last month at the end of June with Herbal Marie. I do a podcast just for the patrons and um, like we talk just about herby stuff that um, you know needs to be talked about but I did mention my personal life and that um, it's a really good lesson for for us to remember that nothing and no one especially no man should come between us and the herbs and that's what's happening. He's distracting me and annoying me, or I'm letting myself be distracted and annoyed to the point where like, I have a stack of books in front of me right now that's as high as my head because I'm, I'm tr trying to work on um, the next herb podcast. 
and it's distracting. He's taking me away from what, what I really want to be doing by pissing me off. And uh, yeah, so I guess it's that's up to me though, whether I react and get pissed off. So I'm trying to calm my reactions. And I'm trying to evaluate what it's triggering me, why I feel that way, and um, what he's showing me. Like, what is he showing me that's within myself that um, needs to be addressed? So yeah, that's about it. That's the short update. And um, yeah, it is sort of like, I just really wish I had someone to hug and kiss. <laughs> There's also that. <laughs> so that's fine. <laughs> Let's do the law of consciousness before I get any more whinier. Number 13, the law of consciousness. As consciousness expands, the space for events increases and therefore the dimensions in which man I think they misspelled cognizes, cognizes good and evil, opportunity and possibilities, past, present, future, enlarge to reveal the outstanding needs in this present world cycle. Okay, so I'm gonna have to repeat that. But yeah, I think, I find typos in everything. I'm a really good person to find mistakes. Ha ha ha, that's probably what I do in all my personal relationships too. Um, I focus on the mistakes and uh, focus on the things that are going wrong. Because, yeah, like, there was other probably good stuff that I could focus on. Um, my future ex-husband that he did this week, there probably is. Actually, I can think of a few of them right now. Like, he does have everything in order. Like, you know, everything's, like, taken care of financially in this house. He has everything in order that should something happen to him someday. Like he, like, he has everything in order, but at the same time, he's, like, just ticking me off. But instead of focusing on good stuff, like, um, I'm just annoyed with him. Yeah, and I think I have to be honest with myself, too, that, like, um, yeah, like, my feelings, I felt like, like, even though we said, like, we're done and it's over, like... I mean, I still, like, um, yeah, my feelings are still hurt by the fact that, like, <clears throat> there's these huge chunk of times now that, like, I have no idea what he did or, you know, and that doesn't help with, like, trust and that it just sort of is, like, yeah, makes you feel like you're on the outskirts and um, that's fine because that's where it's going, but I guess it's, like, fair to myself to be like yeah but just maybe you need to recognize that he or not he but your feeling feelings are hurt a little bit even though we all want to be tough girls yeah like this has hurt me so all right so this is kind of what the law of consciousness is saying like as consciousness expands that as the, our consciousness expands the space for events increases. So as we get a broader view of life, as consciousness expands, there's more space now for even more to happen <laughs> in our life. And therefore the dimensions um, in which we cognize good and evil and opportunities and possibilities and we cognize past, present, future, it all enlarges to reveal the outstanding needs in this present world cycle. And so that's actually kind of what is going on in my life, like everything's getting up in my face, right? Or enlarged to reveal the outstanding needs. Yeah, like everything is in my face, barking like a vicious dog, um, like you need to address this. Um, but yeah, in the same way, it's like, this is how I guess I incarnated to have this experience for my soul growth. And um, even though it's like, I know you want to be like my best, my best um, girlfriend, best friend and be like that mother trucker, he don't does, you know, like, and we could all just snap fingers and be like, he shouldn't do that. And that's so rude. And you need to like, we could feel justified with that. Or we could be like, okay, so let's look at the good things about um, living with someone who, who um, is playing out some double standards. What is it teaching you? What is he teaching you? What is this experience teaching you? 
what is it motivating you to do or be like because i wouldn't be getting this challenge this spiritual challenge if everything was just fine and hunky dory sweet and cute this uncomfortable situation is challenging me to really go inside to really connect with divine energy to really be strong to really anchor my roots down into gaia and to and to find peace in the things that i know like in a way this situation is a catalyst for my spiritual growth way more than if um i was just getting beautifully loved and um you know having like a peaceful interaction like this is making me really walk my talk and all that so anyways there's a lot to reflect on in my personal life and you know why is this even in my reality right now like what is the vibration and energy that I've been putting out that connects me to this and then yeah how can I clean that up so that um, it I can find a solution or um, a workable situation that um, that is really enjoyable so anyways yeah the law of consciousness just to repeat it as consciousness expands the space for events increases and therefore the dimensions in which man cognizes good and evil opportunity and possibility past present future enlarge to reveal the outstanding needs in this present world cycle Okay, so let's pull some cards. We'll leave that, we'll leave that at that, that tiny paragraph at that. And under this um, umbrella of the law of consciousness where things are expanding, more events are taking place to reveal to us the outstanding needs in this present world cycle. This is kind of our world right now too. Like I am just being a selfish little twerp. <laughs> thinking about myself but I mean like like zoom out and look at the whole entire world right now that this is what's going on um, things are becoming more obvious more in, more in our face the problems are becoming so obvious in the world why because it's trying to show us um, it's trying to reveal to us the outstanding needs in this world so, I mean, the small problems we have kind of reflect the larger problems, too. So, yeah, that's a good, uh, I'm glad I said that to myself because now I'm kind of thinking, okay, so in the world, like, I really don't want there to be war, you know, and this, this, um, this kind of attack mentality, right? I don't like seeing that in the world. So, yeah, what can I do? in my life to not be adding into that kind of energy so when i'm feeling bitter and and um like resentful and attackful i mean because like even yesterday like i couldn't even stand to look at his face i actually had to leave for like i was like come on girls let's go so we went and visited my grandma for a couple hours which was so nice so that was a good thing to be motivated to do and we did we did a little shopping and we yeah so for the entire afternoon I had to actually leave and that was a good choice because um yeah like not that you should always run away from your problems but if you need to go cool down then you should probably do that so yeah I need to just keep on making choices that it helps me get into a better place um one that is not encouraging war to happen so yeah probably I need to also be honest maybe I need to tell him how I'm feeling yeah <laughs> who wants to talk who wants to communicate in their in their relationships all right so here's what we're gonna do as you can hear I'm laying out the archangel archangel sigils which means I am getting out the deck, the soul trees. Um, this is from Allison Williams Yee. It's called Soul Trees. And um, it's a really great deck. And I usually like to grab this deck 
um, to show me and tell me what the hell I'm doing wrong. It seems pretty, a lot of the stuff I'm doing wrong seems pretty obvious. Now, I mean, that's kind of interesting. I just complained about somebody like as if he's the wrong person, but I, I know better. I know that everything that's outside of me is actually something that's in, in me. And um, just like when I'm looking in the mirror, I can't go up to the mirror and change my face on the mirror. I, if I want my face to change, I have to do that from inside me. Like if I look in the mirror and I look sad, the only way for me to change that is for me to be happy within. And then I'll smile and then what's reflected back to me is change. So I know that I can't change my reality without changing my in, inner scape. So if there's something in my reality that I don't like, it's just how I roll. I just know it has something to do um, with me. You know, like I'm a co-creator here. I'm not a victim. I'm not a victim. So if I don't like something, um, it's up to me to transmute it within. All right, so I see live from your heart, but I'm gonna shuffle this again. <laughs> All right, so, or maybe that is my first card, honestly. All right, we'll put live from your heart in. It's upside down though. So my first message is that I'm not living from my heart as much as I could be. I could be more in my heart space. I could be coming in, I could be coming in with uh, more unconditional love. I could be coming in with less judgment. I could be coming in, I should be going outside is what this card is saying to me. I need to spend like the day in the garden and just anchoring into that earth energy. One, because she needs us too and because two, I need her. All right, so, ugh, this card again, what the hell? I got initiative again and clarity upside down. So yeah, like I guess what I need to keep reminding myself is that I am being initiated into a new realm within me. I'm just gonna cut the deck for the fourth one. All right, that's hilarious. I got the first root chakra. Okay, so <laughs> you have no idea how my first root chakra is is struggling with this new situation. All right, so I am being initiated into this new place, this new state of being. Like I was telling you, it's really been encouraging me to um, connect with the, the energy within, be grounded, and um, allow myself, if I could get out of my head, and stop being so distracted by this. Now is the, my opportunity to step into more awareness of who I truly am and get into this space that I can have such good clarity. And it's like kind of almost there for me because like I know all this, but yet this situation, these distractions are like a film over my eyes. Um, and yeah... It's, it's really screwing with my clarity. So um, live from your heart. Allow this initiation to take place. Take more initiative yourself to keep really pulling yourself up and out of it, doing the work so that clarity can come through. And also healing and clean, clearing of the first root chakra. So yeah, like it has been a struggle for my physical body almost because, you know, um, yeah, it not feeling like I'm desired or have any, like have a connection um, physically to anybody. Like I have to process that like really like I'm there are days where I'm like oh my god like 
I need to hook up, <laughs> but I don't want to just do that, right? Like I really do want to clean up my energy and someday have a beautiful lover. But then I think, oh my God, like, I don't think I can go years upon years without sex. I really don't. <laughs> like that's probably like what screws, screws a lot of people up. No pun intended, but it's like, yeah, I'm going to wait for a good partner and this and that and then like you just have that one week after your period when your progesterone is like it don't matter if it's if he's perfect like he'll do <laughs> so like I have I know there's that energy um, that needs to be addressed and um, but it's deeper than that it's deeper that you know like in society um, we get validated by sex and we get um, yeah like tell me I'm pretty and yeah, like fuck me to show me that you mean it kind of like energy, you know, like, and if that's not in your life and it always had been, it's kind of like there's, there is, there's a little bit of a void that you think, whether it's a real void or not, but you almost think that you need to fill it, you know, and um, just that you're missing something. Why? Because we're looking for love outside of ourselves and and uh, that's not where it is ever. Everything is only inside of you anyways. Your thoughts are inside you. Your emotions are inside of you. Um, everything is inside of you, including the love. And yeah, we get screwed up when we start to look for it outside of ourselves. So yeah, big, 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 big message um, for me to get in love from within get in love with myself and um, honor my self-worth and and uh, see myself in this body as you know sacred energy that um, of course I'm not gonna just give it away but even just having those thoughts that like I need I, I need I need to connect with somebody like that's distracting and it's distracting me from from my spiritual journey in a lot of ways. So yeah, those are my hard messages that I'm looking at this morning here. Live from your heart, cause yeah, um, you're, if you're not in your heart space, you're in your ego mind, and that's who gets pissed, that's who gets judgmental, that's, that is who gets jealous, that is who gets revengeful, um, yeah. That's who gets suspicious, that's who gets aggressive, and if it's any of that stuff going on, you're not living in your heart space, and the only place to live right now is in your heart space. So, dang. All right, so I do have one, aw, I just wanna put this deck down, but as I was sitting, kind of shuffling it, one card popped up from the center, and it is the rebirth card. So I'm actually gonna scrunch. I had a nice little organized four column thing going out, laying out right now. But now I'm gonna scrunch these cards together because I need this card. Oh, and it's so cool. It matches the live from your heart card. The colors match. So the card that popped up was the rebirth card. So yeah, this initiation, this cycle in my life is obviously one of death and then dun dun dun, rebirth. So I'm just in the death process right now, still. and uh, But it's okay because it's saying like, what's next is rebirth. What's next is new shoots. What's next is, you know, it's kind of like as the plant withers and dies at the end of a cycle, if it's a perennial, those roots are still in there. And yeah, fresh new, new sprouts will come back out. And um, at first you're like, wow, like, like it's like marshmallow root, like it gets so tall and it's like, it starts fresh every spring and it's like, wow, how do you grow that tall? Like within a season and then at the end of it, you just let it go and you restart again. So I have this beautiful message um, to make myself feel better. <laughs> That this is all a process of rebirth and it's going to be beautiful um, you just have to get through it and do the work and uh, don't be afraid to live in your heart space don't be don't be afraid just to let it go you know I know society 
makes us feel like we have to be so angry and so justified and and uh, talk shit about the person that we're breaking up with but um, if you can just stay in your heart space regardless that's gonna serve you big big time Whew, let's take a drink of dandelion root tea <laughs> Stay in your heart space and rebirth. I think we just found the title of this podcast. Yeah. Stay in your heart space and rebirth. And that's what I should be focused on. Even though there's going to be a lot of craziness and darkness and challenging moments in between the words stay in your heart space and rebirth. Like in the moment of that and a lot of shit could happen, but um, I need to stay focused on uh, what's going on. I mean, it's good to be aware of what's g going on. <clears throat> like, I'm not saying put my head in the sand or anything like that, because it's important for me to be aware of how I'm feeling, what it's surfacing, what it's bringing up. Just like the law of consciousness said um, that it enlarges our space, the dimension, it enlarges it to reveal the outstanding needs. So yeah, like I want to stay focused and present and uh, be aware of it, but you know, live from your heart space and rebirth. To make that transition as easy as possible, I need to stay focused on the heart space and rebirthing um, and allow everything else to kind of play out. All right, so... <laughs> I mentioned to you that I have a stack of books on my desk that's actually, yeah, like taller than me because I'm going through all my herb books and reading all about lemon balm, just refreshing and seeing what else I can find um, to present this herb over at Herbal Marie. So yeah, I've got work to do today. I really do. I have better things to focus on. I could go outside. One, I need to dig up all these thistles have sprouted up everywhere. I need to do that. Um, I could harvest, I see some red clovers that I could pick. Um, just lots of little things here and there. I could, I could uh, <laughs> just sort of, you know, tinker and piddle in the garden for as long as, you know, I want to. There's plenty to do. But um, so yeah, my desk is sort of weird. So I've been sort of like working on the side with this layout. And now I'm gonna grab a few, I'm gonna grab the Magic of Flowers Oracle by Tess Whitehurst and um, see if we could just get a little bit of advice um, for the week from the, from the Magic of Flowers. But I might lay them out a little different here. Let's see. Yeah, when I'm when I'm sitting here looking at it, like I'm laying it out like as if I would be sitting from the other side of the desk, but I, I literally have such a small space to work in today. So let's let's see what um the flowers want to tell us this week for the week as we expand our consciousness as things we get more space for things to be more obvious and in our face as we become aware of what needs to be tended what do you got for us okay so foxglove comes in um it's hard to say if it's upside down or not that's what i'm saying like i'm working from the side of my layout like i don't even know what the hell is going on right now but foxglove um is coming through with you know, um, determination and oh, she's got her, she's in a, she's, oh my God, she has her armor on. That is such a personal message for me to put on my spiritual armor of protection. You know, um, my breastplate, my helmet, my shoes, like the archangels have given us a full set of armor, put it on um, and be protected. But foxglove here is all about summoning your courage and um, yeah, showing up for this battle. Not that I'm gonna punch his face in, not that I am battling with him. I'm battling within myself. This battle is in my inner inner ground, you know? 
this battle is within my mind. This battle is with my ego. I just project it out and blame other people because that's what we do. We, we tap into victim mentality and we just always point fingers. But really, everything is within. So the battle is within and the peace can also be found within. On the bottom, oh, it's that bitch morning glory. <laughs> Ugh, I call her a bitch. Usually I just call her a hoe. See, so that tells me that, um, yeah, my energy is really aggressive right now. And I have to be aware of that. And I have to watch that because um, that will pinch me off and lead me astray every single time. Honey, if you go out looking for a fight, you're going to find it. That's what I tell myself. If you go looking for a fight, you're going to find it. And so, yeah, when I get in this kind of mood, not that it's a mood, but it's like a mental state. When I get in this mental state, um, I should just go sign up for like um, some MMA or something and because I might as well. Because when I'm putting out this type of energy, I'm going to find somebody to roll with. And I don't really want to do that. I don't want to do that anymore. Like, I'm tired of fighting. And... Um, Unless it's the good fight. <laughs> Unless it's for Gaia, then I will fight. I am one of her warriors. Like, I'm here for you, girl. When, just call on me whenever. But in my own personal life with, like, drama and stuff, like, I need to... Morning Glory is saying, awaken to the magic. And did you do that this morning? No. You awoke into thoughts of annoyance and woke into a thoughts of how you hate your life. When you wake up and think about how much you hate your life, you're not even noticing all the beautiful things around you. You walk through the garden and you don't see anything, you know, because you're too busy um, thinking about um, what's wrong. All right, so I'm gonna shuffle again. I just, my, my eye got caught on the impatience card, which reminds me that everything is in divine timing. Everything is where it should be, how it should be, and everything's going to play out um, perfectly. Just have a little faith. Okay, so our next card is Rose with unconditional love. Yeah, she's saying, please, you know, just be aware. Um, are you in your heart space or not? That's your work today, Sadie Marie. That is your work today. Are you in your heart space or not? Within every moment, are you coming from a place of love or not? I mean, I'm going to talk real slow today. That's my intentions. Before I open up my mouth, I'm going to I'm going to think about and what am what are you about to say? Is it from your heart space or is it just your stupid ego reacting? So sometimes like I have to make intentions to shut up and just every like be Forrest Gump, whatever, like before you open your mouth, think about it and talk slower. Because once I start talking fast, like things could just fly out without having a chance to go through my filter. And the filter that I want to be using today is my heart filter. I need to I need to filter everything through my heart before it comes out of my mouth. So everything that comes into me, let's filter it in a way and look for the love, look for the good, look for the connection, okay? And anything that comes out of me today, whether that comes, it comes out of my mouth or it's just energy that I'm gonna project out into the world, can it come from my heart space today? Because my reality needs to be infused with more love. So yeah, that's what Rose is all about pure love, connecting into that divine love. So that means I need to keep reading my newest book from Tina Louise Spaulding, um, The Unadult, Unaltered Soul, which is kind of um, teaching me that, you know, we do look for love outside of us. And the only place we really ever truly find it is within. The perfect love lies within. And then Tulip is the last one, the coming in, and she is a devotee of beauty. So yeah, if I'm looking for a remedy <laughs> to my life, you know, yeah, I do need to dive deep into my darkness to figure everything out and to 
contemplate and process and transmute and all that, but it should be like my full-time job to look for beauty, to look for love, to look for the magic in my life. Just keep searching, it's there, it's physics. If there is darkness, then there is light. You just have to look for it. So yeah, be a devotee of beauty. Let's see what else Tulip has to say. I'll just read them. Um, Tess, she did her, the magical specialties. Let's just read those real quick. So um, Tulip also is about beauty, desire, gratitude, grounding, heart strengthening, love goddess alignment. Love, Tulip is about relationship healing and simplicity. So, I mean, yeah, like, I don't think she's saying, like, mend and fix and try to repair this broken one, but there is a relationship within myself. There is a perspective that I hold towards this relationship that can be healed. And yeah, Tulip is right. I need to recognize and honor my own true beauty. Huh, that was sweet of her. And uh, let's see what Rose has to say. Yeah, I mean, we this self-worth stuff is like also one of those topics that is so in my face right now. So yeah, I'm just trying to honor my body, touch my body in a way that's like, I love you, like, you know, give that to myself and um, yeah, respect myself. So Rose is all about pure love. It is also about abundance, more beauty, <laughs> clearing, blessing dreams, emotional healing, friendship, protection, purification, romantic love, secrecy, self-love, and spirituality. So yeah, before I can really like start on another or any relationship outside of myself, I have to nurture the one within. Although yeah, like I tr trust me ego, I hear you. Ego's like, but I need a friend. <laughs> <laughs> ego needs a friend with benefits I respect you ego I hear you um, I would enjoy it too um, but yeah Rose is like please open your heart and allow love to lead the way and uh, Rose is also saying you know along with Fox love it came in with all that protective armor Rose too is is protection she says feel yourself to be surrounded and protected by love so the armor that we want to wear is the armor of love. I know we were just talking about taking the armor off, but um, a couple episodes ago, but you know, there is a different type of armor and that is love armor um, just to protect us and hold us while we do our healing work, while we, um, you know, allow ourselves, yeah, to basically do the emotional healing. Uh, Rose also says, know that you are lovable. So yeah, when a relationship ends, I think that's probably the worst thing. Everyone, you might feel, I know I feel like um, I'm unlovable, like probably never, who's, who else is ever gonna love me? Will anyone ever love me? But like that's a total reflection, um, a projection that if I'm feeling that way, it's because my self-love and my self-worth are low. I mean, if I'm worried about someone else loving me, it's because I'm not loving myself up enough. So I get that. I hear that for sure. Morning Glory. Um, seriously, I cannot. I, I try to break up with Morning Glory all the time. <laughs> Morning Glory just won't leave me alone because she wants me to awaken to the magic of life. Now, Morning Glory also has a message of clarity which is interesting because she's coming right underneath the clarity tree that we pulled. So clarity, simplicity, happiness, harmony, intuition. Morning Glory is, is reminding me to listen to my divine guidance and just to relax. I told you I felt really skittish. Um, so Morning Glory is reminding me to relax and to just be receptive so there is love coming towards me. There is good energy. My guides are sending me the energy to repair me on so many levels, but I have to be receptive to that. I have to be receptive 
to the energetic healings and to the downloads. And yeah, when I get all caught up in my mind, I'm pinching, like I'm just closing the door on that. So, which has been interesting because like I feel that I need to be more receptive and it's made me kind of like desire like an herbal smoke, right? Or, you know, something to free up my mind and open up my, you know, like something to kill the ego. And um, when I have that desire, like that is a good um, a thing for me to be aware of because like I am being challenged to the point where like, I'm like, oh my God, like I need to smoke something. So I, that's just a side note for myself. Like, like I do understand that like I keep getting pushed to the edge, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like I see you edge, I see you. But I just just makes me more determined to be stronger and um, you know keep doing the work within. So foxglove's magical specialties is all about courage and heart healing and protection, and it's also a fairy connection. So this kind of just full circles back to my own intuition that like I need to spend the entire day as much as I can outside and in the garden. And um, why? Because that is where the fairy realm resides. And I can tap into that energy just to be more lighthearted. So Foxglove says a perspective shift might be all that is called for. Just change your perception. Just change your perspective. Release cords of fear and disempowerment and live your courage. So when I see double standards, big old double double D double standards, like big old double standards um, going on in this relationship. That's me that needs to release cords of disempowerment. That's my perception that's making me feel like that. You know, just, I have to remember that I have horse energy, you know, and it's up to me who I let get on and ride, take a ride, <laughs> do you know? Like, I am a powerful being, and so are you. So is the horse. It's up to the horse who lets, lets you put on the bridle and take a ride. If the horse says no, no one's getting on that day, <laughs> you know? So I have to remember that I am that powerful as well. And if I'm being taken for an emotional roller coaster ride, well, I'm the one who got on the ride. If I feel like someone's taking advantage of me, well, I'm the one who let them climb upon my back. So, shake them off. <laughs> and do what your heart calls you to do. Act boldly. Take action in manifesting the outcome that is most desirable to you. You are more powerful than you have been, than you have been realizing. Now is the time to acknowledge your vast and considerable power. Then act from it without delay and watch miracles unfold. If you've noticed your thoughts and feelings developing a pattern of anxiety or fear, continually call on angels to surround you in protective light and remind yourself again and again, if necessary, that when you call on divine protection, and trust in it, it always arrives. Stop giving your power away to others. Do what feels right to you. Speak your truth. Live your greatness in only the way that you can. Ooh, so yeah, Fox Love <laughs> is totally the one that's, that's taken me by the hand and dragging me into the fairy realm and she's reminding me that I shouldn't procrastinate for one moment longer. Summon your courage, decide what needs to be done, and then do it to the very best of your ability. And here's the trigger right here. Because I actually said earlier that this type of situation is making me like think like, should I go out and be bad too? Like, should I give him a taste of his own medicine? And, and right here, Fox Love is saying, absolutely refuse to feel or act from weakness, fear, or disempowerment. Put your foot down now and choose strength. So Foxglove is saying, no, don't do that. 
because it's coming from the wrong energetic place. Don't be like that. That's not, you know, you don't need to rebel just because you feel, you're feeling disempowered. And that's why, like, teenagers rebel all the time because they don't feel like they have enough of their own power. They're not allowed to do what they want to do. So don't rebel from that type of situation, from that type of energetics. Like, just know that all the power is available to you. It only awaits your recognition, acceptance, and self-assurance. So I just need to do whatever I'm called to do. I think like it is probably good for me to seriously and quickly and purposely and full of intent to expand my friend circle. Not that like I'm looking to be bad with anyone in particular, but just like I totally need to, um, yeah, get out and uh, just be around some people that are mentally stimulating that are encouraging, that are refreshing because they've got a bit of newness to them, to me, and um, just get around some new energy because, yeah, I'm stifling hard up in here. <laughs> so what a necessary reminder to create from our power and not fear. Act from our place of strength you know, not just from our weakness or our limit, our uh, limiting things that we got going on. So anyways, yeah, sorry for being so whiny today, <laughs> but it is my podcast, you guys. Hey, if you can't afford, afford therapy, just start a podcast. Yeah, just <laughs> start a podcast. Oh, you got some shit going on in your life. That's crazy. You need someone to talk to, start a podcast. Um, but yeah, this podcast, it does help me figure things out in my life. It helps me re remember, it helps remind me. Um, and I really appreciate that. It also, you know, is, um, I am dedicated to reviewing the laws of the universe. So I'll be thinking about the law of consciousness today and, uh, just being aware that, you know, as I expand, yeah, it does seem like it got a little crazier this weekend, but maybe that's because I expanded right? I'm in this initiation. And um, yeah, things are going to get a little hairy scary for a little bit within me as as things come to the surface that we're hiding in the corners. Thing, you know, emotions and situations that I never dealt with. Now, now we do now we deal in now we dealing with it. So to end this podcast, I want to just shuffle a few of these little tiny cards by Tina T. Ames. They're called flower whispers, and I'm like, okay, I got three inches left on the table here, and that's about how big these cards are. So let's pull a couple quotes. Woo! Let's throw one on the floor. Did you hear that? Okay, it's a sunshiny, bright yellow flower that says, thank you for your acts of kindness. It has raised the vibration of the entire universe. Okay yeah we need to talk about this um that is the big thing right now what are you putting out what are you putting out so that is why it's so important for me to clean this um up within my own personal life because everything that i am i'm thinking about it's adding to the world so i really don't want to put out um any more anger mistrust and violence right <laughs> That's not what I want to be sowing in the world. What I want to do is be putting out good vibes. I want to be in my heart space, right? Stay in your heart space and um, and uh, put out love. So thank you for your, your acts of kindness. What kind of kindness can I do today? How can I look at this situation and see it with kindness? Like instead of seeing it as a me versus him, like... Could I look at it that like this is probably hard for him too? And he's he's process, processing <laughs> and dealing with shit that he knows best. And just like how I had to leave for the entire afternoon yesterday, maybe he needed to leave for an entire day and an entire night. <clears throat> how about you leave for Evs? No. <laughs> but seriously, I need to um, watch what I'm putting out. And um, 
it has and do my part to raise the vibration of the entire universe not keep it down in in aggression and duality and not this lower 3d stuff i got to make sure that i'm not feeding that beast <clears throat> all right let's get another little quote to end on <clears throat> oh we got this one last week you are a child of the universe no less than the trees and stars you have a right to be here okay so i pulled that one <clears throat> for myself <clears throat> and that was a huge deal because you know i was feeling unwelcomed in my own home and um yeah this card is saying you have a right to be here you have a right to be here so feel comfortable where you're at wherever you're at it's okay to change where you're at wherever you're at you have a right to be here and then our last one is though but <laughs> That thing called your intuition, it's your soul, and you can trust it. So, yeah, put out the love, but definitely listen to the intuition. Um, that's where I'm going to find the clarity. That is where I'm going to find the guidance that I really need and uh, will clue me in. Ego, ego wants me to think that it has good intuition, but it's just all about the bad bullshit so I really need to listen to my real intuition in my heart space, in my third eye, listen to the whispers of my soul because that's what's going to guide me and that is what I can trust. So dang, thank you for hanging out with me. I guess we just had, I had a little bit of sludge I had to trudge through here on this Monday morning. Oh, but do you know how much better I feel? <laughs> like, like just talking it out. So give yourself that opportunity, you know, to sit down today and just sort of talk out anything that might be, that might have crawled up your ass and is, is, is just rubbing you the wrong way. Like understand your triggers, understand what's going on because it's only when you start to understand yourself that you can clarify your mind and you can live and stay in your heart space, right? Because that's who we want to rebirth into. Whatever's going on, we want to rebirth into someone who is confident and strong, loving, kind in their heart space and putting out good in the world, right? We want to be adding to the energy. We want to be doing our part to keep the vibration high, to raise the frequency of this planet. So it's cool. It's cool that I had to sit down and think about what didn't feel good because now I can, I'm reminded, I'm reminded now of, of the importance of looking for beautiful things, of creating wonderful things, of vibing with positive things. So I'm reminded of all this stuff now, but I had to first take about 30 minutes and bitch complain and moan <laughs> to get there so if you trudge through with me thank you for that I hope that I've inspired you to do the same it really is all about changing our perspective using our intuition being guided from our higher self from our soul um, allowing us to feel the healing love of our angels and our guides and our fairies and whatever else you want to call it our dragons <laughs> um, we have a lot of good energy around us but yeah we have to keep clearing and loving and transmuting so that we can rebirth into these beautiful beings that truly belong to be here you are worthy you are loved you are light you are absolutely magnificent and um, before anyone else can see that within you, you have to see that within yourself. So happy Monday, y'all. Here's to a wonderful week of self-love, self-nurturing, -nur self-healing, and self-respect. It's okay to say no, and it's okay to set boundaries, and um, it's okay to do whatever you need to do. Um, to nurture yourself through this initiation. Woo! So much love, y'all.